Good morning. Time for a little how to host a dungeon stream. Seems like the audio is a little bit better today than it was yesterday. All right, so today I'm going to play another game of how to host a dungeon through, hopefully from beginning to end. So how to host a dungeon is my solo game of dungeon creation. This is a game where you create a dungeon from the beginning of the world through the rise and fall of civilizations, the arrival of monsters, and eventually, once the rules for that have been refined, uh, adventurers appearing, an archvillain appearing and trying to conquer the world, and its ultimate fate being decided one way or the other. Uh, this is a game that you can buy today if you go to my website, tonydowler.com. Uh, what I'm playtesting today is a new version of the game. It's, it's version 2 that I've been working on for quite a while. It uh, has a lot of uh, new rules, new things that can happen. It's streamlined, refined. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. But that said, let's jump right in. So this piece of paper is going to be my dungeon. This is my world. Uh, it's blank right now. So we're going to take the rules and we're going to start with the primordial age. The primordial age is where we get an idea of what the basic shape and form of this world is going to look like. And we start by rolling on this table here that just uh, gives us an outline of its uh, basic form. So number four is the mountain. Uh, we did this in yesterday's playtest, but I'm going to do it again because it's actually one of my favorite shapes. So um, the first line I'm going to draw is the surface of our world. So we've got a kind of crazy mountain range here and then a big valley. Uh, this is a ton of space for this game. Since this is about dungeons, you know, the underground is kind of the most important part. So often, you know, we'll draw this line up here and make the surface just a thin space. But today I'm going to play test the Magician Civilization. And the Magician Civilization, they build their cities above ground, and then they later get buried and turned into dungeons. So it's actually great to have a ton of, a ton of space up there. So um, without further ado, Let's get started. I'm just adding a little moon there because why not? How about some stars too? This is a great game for me because I'm an inveterate doodler. I just can't stop doodling. And this game gives me excuse to do it um, over and over again. You know, I'm going to make those even into um, some constellations. All right, so um, the Magician Civilization. But first, we need to draw some lines on this map to show what is underground here, because this isn't just all rock. This is actually going to be um, a lot more going on than that. So let's, I'm just going to draw a few lines here. And, um, I think that's good. Really, the guide here is um, just what feels comfortable. You can follow uh, the world, the sample worlds that are in the rules, and do it exactly the way that the rules say. That works too. Uh, Wine wa seventeen eighteen. Do I watch any sports? Um, not particularly, though. Uh, I don't mind a good hockey game. Being a Canadian, so. We're now going to number these zones off. One, two, three, four, five, six, and we'll make the surface region number seven. So for each of these sections, we're going to roll some dice and find out what's there. Uh, we'll start with an eight-sided dice to determine 
what is in each section, and the ten-sided dice will give us some more details about it. So let's see how that works. So section one, uh, a roll of one means there's some kind of valuable ore there. Uh, a three means a vein that runs through the entire area. So, uh, you know, gold is an obvious choice, and I've got this gold pen, so let's do it. Let's make a vein of gold starting up here in the mountain peaks and delving deep underground. And I'm just going to label it gold vein. Very simple. Next, with a roll of four, find the correct page in my rules here. This is a great game for me because I love to doodle. It's not a great game for me because I'm terribly disorganized and I get my pages in the wrong order. So four means water. And a three means there's an underground river in this area. So this could be interesting. Um, I'm going to make my underground river follow the shape of this so it uh, bubbles up from underground and comes out up here. I'm going to use a couple of different blues here. Oh, it appears our sports fan has, has left the chat. Pity. Now, every time I, I run this game, I, I say this, but it bears repeating. Um, I, you know, super overwork my maps, put in lots of little lines and embellishments and details that uh, aren't really needed. Uh, just because that's how I roll, that's what I enjoy doing. When you play, this can just be a line or an elaborate drawing or whatever. It depends how much time you have to play the game. Let's have a waterfall coming out here. Um, how much you like to draw. It's totally a matter of preference. Totally just giving these features very uh, simple, descriptive, prosaic names. The Underground River and the Waterfall. Maybe later uh, some uh, wizards or monsters or something might move into this area and give this a different, cooler name. Uh, and if so, that's great. If not, it's good enough for now. Number three. So here we have a biome. Uh, this means that there's some kind of a refuge for life here, uh, even though it's underground. Uh, in this magical world, underground caves don't have to be um, sterile. They can be teeming with life. Uh, a roll of two means a huge cavern that fills most of this region that has some kind of uh, living things in it. And let's see, there's, there's an optional table where you can see what kind of stuff lives there for aliens. So this is a cave full of alien life. So I think I'm going to just start this with a long meandering tunnel coming up from deep, deep within the earth. And sprouting out into this interestingly shaped cave. Why does it have this shape? Um, who knows? You can, you can let your imagination run wild. Um, what's a good color for my alien life? Uh, let's go with with orange. So um, I'm going to kind of make the orange kind of spongy corpuscles. some spores reaching all the way down underground. And how about a little 
a little red. Put some nice red dots in there to I almost imagine this as a, a darkened cave lit by little red glowing alien eyes. That could be a, an interesting and scary place for someone to explore, full of alien life. All right, and we'll continue. Magma. There's a magma river flowing through this area, flowing off the page if possible. Okay, well, um, um, that's sort of interesting. I'm not sure, you know, where. This river comes from. necessarily make the most geological sense but there you go maybe maybe this river is forcing its way into this area and cracking the rocks or maybe it somehow magically issues from these rocks I haven't really decided yet and I don't need to And I think the game doesn't necessarily tell me to do this, but I'm, I'm just going to draw some cracks here leading to the surface and um, some steam vents. I think there are, you know, maybe natural hot springs or geysers where this uh, comes up. can't see that great on camera, but maybe if I adjust the lighting a little bit. Hey, Bommel, Bommelbart. Oh, yeah. Uh, on the on the forums, playing the forums game. That's awesome. I really appreciated um, that you really did a review of the game and, and talked about what you liked and didn't like and, and what seemed to work and didn't work. Um, some of those were definitely things I've been thinking about, and some of them were things that I hadn't thought about. So that's that's super helpful. All right, level five. We have a nexus. So when we get a nexus, uh, what that means is there's some sort of a particularly unique feature of the dungeon here. Uh, I have a big list of nexuses that I simply roll on this table and, and choose one. Number nine, the intellect. A very, very ancient intelligence is located on this spot. Um, that's kind of an interesting, interesting result. Uh, you know, I, I wonder if it's like, um, is there some kind of disembodied intelligence living in a cave? Or is there a creature? Or maybe like just a, like a, a brain? I don't know. Let's... Let's draw and see see what I come up with. I think that somewhere down here there's a cave. And and something something lives in here. Maybe this is some kind of entity left over from the creation of the world. You know, Greek myths are full of stories of monsters and titans that get imprisoned underground or punished for some reason. So maybe this is, you know, some godling. I'm just going to... These are psychic waves coming from his head, if you can't tell, just to, you know, indicate uh, how powerful his, his, his intellect is. Yes, this play test is indeed headed for a magician civilization. Um, 
And I appreciated your comment to say up front that if you want to do magicians to have a little bit more space on the surface, uh, which is which is something I'm going to add to the rules. So uh, this intellect, there are no special rules for it. There's nothing in the game that says what happens if a monster or a civilization comes down here and encounters this intellect. So we kind of, um, you know, uh, let um, uh, we, we kind of let the game, we, we see what happens. You know, maybe we'll find some story there or, or maybe we won't. It's, uh, or maybe it'll be something that, you know, could be there for, to inspire a Dungeons and Dragons game in the future or, or, or whatever. All right, so our last section here. Don't let myself get too distracted. Um, um, so eight, what do I do on a roll of eight? Just rock, right, that's what I do on a roll of eight. Um, it's, it's okay to have places in your dungeon that don't have any special features. I'm just gonna kinda stipple this in a, a little bit just to show that it's just rock uh, that's just a place for you know monsters to build homes in the future or something and thank you for the the compliment on my art skills you know really i just um i just doodle i always have i draw like crazy i can't sit next to a piece of paper without drawing something on it um, there are others who have far more skills than I do, but I, I just do my best to enjoy it. All right, finally, the surface. Um, the surface we do last. Uh, the reason for that is that the surface is kind of the most complicated place. It can have the most different things. So drawing all this is a little bit of training for the surface, which might have three or four different features, uh, depending on what you roll. So let's find out what the surface has. Uh, on a nine, one small terrestrial biome surrounded by wasteland. Uh, okay, well that's that's kind of interesting. Um, I could roll randomly for where it is, but I think I'm just going to put it here because I, this is going to be a, like a steam wasteland, and then the mountains are are going to be tall and barren. But something is going to be here, um, and I think it's just going to be. I'm just going to do a forest. I could include a random table, maybe. To determine what what a random biome is, that that's something I might add in a future copy of the rules. But in this one, it's just up to your up to your preference. I always loved in in Lord of the Rings how uh, there's allusions to a time when when one great forest covered almost the entire world. So. Uh, I'd love to have a, a forest present at the start of the game. Um, the stars are just something that I, I doodled in. Um, you can't really see them very well, but there are also some lines making a constellation here. It just seems sort of wizard themed. And also, I played my regular Dungeon World game last night, and stars and constellations are um, are kind of a special feature of that game because it is a game with flying ships and floating space islands and we decided that they're organized into constellations which have some kind of weird mystical effect on what happens in particular areas in the universe so we just have had constellations on the mind all right so that's our primordial age that's that's the world we're going to play in now we're going to do what's called the age of civilization where some civilized group comes in and starts building in this world and they're going to build up to a certain point and then their civilization is going to fall and leave behind cool stuff for future um, people and monsters to discover. So what I'm doing is I'm just uh, layering a sheet of, of tracing paper over this so that we can see what came before but draw fresh. Uh, you can totally just you know do this on one page, you don't have to use tracing paper. You can also, you know, do it online or use a drawing program. But for streams, I like to use tracing paper because it gives me an opportunity to do more sort of fresh drawings. But you can still sort of see what came before. Um, I'm just going to 
re-sketch in some of the features that I, I know are going to be significant right from the start. But all this underground stuff I'm just going to leave undrawn until it becomes significant um, in the game. Let's draw a little steam here. So the Age of Civilization. Um, there are a number of civilizations to choose from, but I'm going to do the Magicians today. The main reason I'm doing that is because uh, really the Magicians are the, the roughest of the civilizations. They're the newest, and they're the one that needs the most work. So I'm fully expecting that some things won't work that great, and I'll have to uh, make some, some notes on here of things to fix for a future, future draft of the game. Um, so let's see what the rules say. The magicians, known also variously as wizards, sages, hermetics, are a surface-dwelling civilization whose works are doomed to be buried in a great cataclysm. Um, the magicians gather yearly to summon jinn, whom they enslave or bind into magical constructions. Uh, so we start at a random point on the surface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll a d4 just to see over which of these four strata we're going to start. So the wizards actually arise in the forest. We're going to draw a summoning stone where they gather to summon Jin to do their bidding. Um, I'm going to make this a pillar towering over the forest. Uh, and just, I guess it's like a pillar of mystical blue stone with a massive red uh, gem or, or pulsing power thing in it. Yeah, and as I said before, I, I totally over overdo it. I draw way more than I need to. It's just, I can't help myself. Let's call it the Stone of Ur. Near the stone, draw a tower and put one uh, bead in it. Let's use purple for wizards. We'll draw a little wizard's tower here, and we'll put a wizard in it. Um, and that's it. That's what we start with, a summoning stone and a single wizard. Now we go through the wizard's life cycle. So we do a number of turns where the wizards do things, and it changes the world. So the very first thing that happens is the wizards expand their population. So we add another another bead. I'm going to just, I'm going to make this tower taller and uh, more architecturally improbable. And add another wizard. Next, uh, the wizards gather to summon Jin. So we add a white bead at the summoning stone. Uh, colored beads usually represent population. Uh, clear beads usually represent uh, treasure, uh, but it could also be resources, food, whatever is valuable. And in this civilization, they represent uh, Jin. Um, now we explore, looking for some kind of resources to explore, because the wizards, they have some kind of plan and they're always looking for a way to implement it. So, of course, this tower has a dungeon under it. And from here, we're going to explore towards this alien life here because, uh, you know, wizards are curious about that stuff. So I'm just going to draw a door here because they may be curious about it, but they, you know, are also cautious. Um, so, if the wizards have discovered any resources, build the appropriate magician construction. Uh, I keep saying wizards and magicians interchangeably, because, you know, they're obviously wizards, as well as magicians. So, I have a table here, and I look, and what did we discover? We discovered a biome, which means we can build a witchwood or a pleasure dome. Um, we're going to build a Witchwood because these wizards live in a magical forest, so it only makes sense for them to enchant it. 
So I'm going to just add some dots here to just kind of represent that this is no normal forest. Uh, building the Witchwood consumes the gin, so we take it off the map. Um, some of these constructions have special rules. The Witchwood, I believe, doesn't. It's just a cool thing on the map. So now we continue the game. So the Wizards will continue to expand their population. Let's um, build another Wizard's Tower over here. Put a wizard in it. Let's put a bridge between these towers too. Why not? The wizards gather to summon another djinn. Um, hmm. That's a good point. That's uh, obviously a mistake about the lack of vengeance or diaspora. Oh, hi, Devin. Happy to see you. So uh, I have to confess that I'm a super novice Twitcher, and I just heard the notification sound that I think means somebody followed me. Um, and I'm not quite sure what that meant. So I should say thank you for following me or, or whatever. I don't remember how to see what that notification was about. Maybe someone... Um, who understands Twitch better than I can, can tell me what I'm doing wrong for not knowing that. Oh, that was you following me. Thank you, Devin. Thank you for following. Uh, Devin Rue is an amazing artist and mapper. She does uh, magical things with uh, these Copic markers, and it is a joy to uh, watch her stream and also to buy her stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Bommelbart, the comments are definitely appreciated. In fact, uh, what I should be doing is when you mention something like that, I should be making a note in my rule book because this is what I'll be looking at on Friday when I when I make the next draft of these rules. Um, okay, the wizards, having summoned a djinn, now explore seeking for resources. Now, they always want to, you know, find new kinds of resources. So I'm actually going to build a suspension bridge over these weird alien fungi. And I'm going to put another door on the other side. And I'm going to explore towards this river. Because the wizards, seeing this water, they, they intuit there must be an underground river. And that's probably something they can use usefully. Uh, the, the distance of how far they can explore is, is kind of a judgment call. What the rule says is, is as long as your finger so um, actually, it looks like they can actually reach that underground river in one explore. If they couldn't, something different would happen, because when they can't find resources, they do something different. But maybe that'll happen on a future round there. We'll just draw in a little bit of that underground river. So when the wizards find an underground river, they can build um, a magical aqueduct. Uh, wow, OK, that sounds cool. Uh, I'm just going to draw like a kind of a, a water wheel here. And we'll just say like the this is some kind of a magical generator that generates um, energy that the wizards, magicians can use in their magical research. Um, now, Unlike the Witchwood, when you build a magical aqueduct, it does not consume the djinn. So the wizards, they need to do something about this djinn. They can't just leave these powerful magical beings lying around. But, you know, wizards, they're always thinking ahead, right? They're very uh, wise and clever. So they will build um, uh, let me let me read my rules and make sure that I do this, do this correctly. Um,
So uh, what the wizards do is they build a vault to imprison this djinn. Uh, I don't think the rules are very clear about that, so that's another thing that needs to be made really clear in the rules. So I think um, the wizards decide that this rock down here is a particularly safe place to store and imprison unused gin, uh, a choice that will come back to haunt them. Uh, that is a good question. Um, they could build several at once if they have the requisite resources. My intention is that they build, um, build only one. Uh, you know, that's actually a good thing. One, one of the things I'm doing in this draft of the game is uh, for each civilization, I'm also including a page of uh, advice for running that civilization, different choices, uh, also like what, what are some of the things that are that are uh, ambiguous in the rules that you can do either way. So I might actually put a thing in here of, um, you know, having an optional rule to have them build as many things in a turn as they can, it would really fill the map up fast, which which could be pretty cool. All right, and the wizards, magicians, continue on. So I think um, we're gonna we're gonna build a little wasteland fort here for a wizard to live in, and we add one. Uh, then the wizards explore, looking for useful stuff. That will be pretty easy for these guys because they live right above a magma vein. So I think I'm going to draw a little magma channel down here in this wizard's basement. Who doesn't want a magma channel in their basement? Uh, I need a gin for them to summon before they explore. So first they summon the djinn, then they explore, and then they can use that magma for something. Uh, with magma, I can build an alchemist's foundry or the forge of the cyclopes, which includes an epic treasure. Um, definitely, definitely epic treasures are cool. So I'm going to draw a forge here. And I'm going to put an epic treasure in there. And I've just got a little piece of foam core for this, but uh, this is the the eye of the Cyclops. So in future ages, uh, you can see see there's an eye on there. Uh, in future ages, other creatures might plunder this treasure. It might change hands many times. Adventurers might might loot it, etc. Uh, building that consumes this gin, so we simply remove it. Uh, and we continue on. So, more magician homes. Let's build a domed garden. And a bridge for some enterprising wizard to live in with his own magic tree. The wizards gather another gin and they go exploring. So, um, we're running a little low. I'm gonna. Uh, they could go over here for the gold, but I'm actually gonna gonna dig, dig deeper here and explore in the direction of this alien intelligence. Because even though I, the wizards, I don't know if they can. Maybe they can do something with a nexus. Um, but obviously, if there's a leftover alien intelligence from the dawn of the world buried somewhere below, wizards are gonna go looking for it. Uh, and I'm purposely going to have them not get there because what happens if they don't have any new resources to exploit this turn? Exploit this turn, um, they build a vault and they 
in prison the, gen the genie there, the djinn. So I'm just going to expand the prisons and imprison a genie there. Um, yeah, that's that's a good idea. Having them do plus one. Oh, right. So each treasure, uh, like one would be good for trade. One, like a sword, might be good for fighting or adamant armor. Or yeah, that's that's a cool idea. Uh, and even you know the game could come with some some tokens that indicate on them what that that treasure is. That's a good idea. You know, it's starting to sound like um, when this game is done, you should uh, you should make a supplement or a skin for it and, and use some of these ideas because these are good ideas. Uh, okay, and we move on. So uh, each civilization has an endpoint. It doesn't go on forever. With the wizards, they die when there are too many wizards because, uh, you know, wizards just, once there's enough of them, they can't get along. Some kind of wizards battle is inevitable, right? Or if they've bound too many jinn in the vaults, and they're, the jinn basically revolt and destroy the wizard civilization. But uh, surely that lies far in the future. So let's keep drawing wizard dwellings. I'm going to draw a waterfall house for some wizards to live in. With a waterfall glowing right through the living room. Summon a gin and go looking for resources. I think make a little bridge over the river and continue on to the gold vein. What can wizards do with gold? They can create a mausoleum or a catacomb. Uh, the main difference between the mausoleum and the catacomb is a mausoleum is above ground and a catacomb is below ground. Um, I'm going to make a, a mausoleum. All right, there's a mausoleum. Uh, I put an X on this because the mausoleum counts as a tomb. Uh, that doesn't matter for the wizards, but certain monsters uh, benefit from the presence of tombs. And um, the mausoleum uh, has an epic treasure in it. Uh, anyone have an idea for a good treasure? Are you heading out, Bommelbart? Thank you for joining the stream. Uh, I'm glad that you, you like how to host a dungeon. I hope I can continue to make awesome stuff in it um, for you to for you to enjoy. Um, all right, wizard treasure. Uh, I guess I'm leaning towards a magical wizard hat. I'll leave that for a minute. If someone in the chat suggests something, I'll go with that. Otherwise, it's going to be a magical wizard hat because um, wizards like hats. All right, so uh, one, two, three, four, five. We have six wizards. That means one more wizard is actually going to trigger the end of this civilization. Oh, uh, but I shouldn't be too forgetful because we need to bind another gin in stone since it was not consumed in the construction of the building. All right, I'm going to expand this wizard tower further. Let's, let's uh, draw this wizard hat. There's, uh, there's a wizard hat. They buried him in his hat. Um, now, even though the wizard civilization is doomed, they don't know that, so they continue their activities of summoning a djinn. They seek resources. Here, they make contact with this ancient intelligence. I'm just going to put a chair there. There's like a fancy throne on uh, the edge of this 
this massive abyss where wizards can sit and and commune with this ancient intelligence if it is if it is willing to hear what they have to say uh, so the wizards have reached a magical nexus um, they build a lyceum arcanum this is a big building that's that's large enough for three wizards to live in so large enough for three of these be beads um, I think uh, this lyceum arcanum is going to be like a massive Roman bathhouse. So these wizards, they know how to live it up with like a coffered ceiling. So the natural um, The natural steam vents will serve the bathhouse. Um, and then we have to bind the gin because it was not used to build the building. I'll redraw our alien intelligence since someone has. Uh, contacted it. Uh, now, um, the wizards, uh, thinking that their future is is only bright, have, have built this, these baths, which is room for, for more wizards to live in, but unfortunately their time is up. There are too many wizards, um, and then at the end of this turn we build a civilization ending construction. Let's see if there are seven or more magicians build the diaspora. So um, it seems that the wizards have perhaps accomplished something great or they're going on to greener pastures. It's kind of a mystery why their civilization comes to an end. Uh, we read the end of civilization rules. So when the magician civilized civilization ends, we remove their treasures. I'm gonna make a note of how these could be rules that are clearer. We're going to leave one treasure bead in the gin vault. And now a massive disaster strikes the world and changes its shape. So what's going to happen is these are going to be buried and turn into dungeon areas. Yes, doom o'clock or diaspora o'clock, which maybe maybe it's not doom. Maybe they just uh, ascend to a higher player plane uh, of existence. I'm not I'm not sure. I think that's a mystery for a group of player characters to plumb sometime in the future when they enter the dungeon and discover these ruins. Okay, so uh, I'm going to keep a treasure in the, the gin vault, uh, a magic hat, and the eye of the cyclops. So time has eroded the tops of the mountains, and the wizard civilization has been, been buried. Um, I'm gonna, there's still a forest here. The waterfall still, still trickles. <laughs> Thank you, Devin. I'm, I'm glad that this is interesting to someone, someone other than me, because um, that certainly was always the, always the worry when I created this game was that no one would care about it, but me. Um, okay, uh, the the summoning stone, however, it still 
sticks above the ground is a mysterious monument to the past. The, the red eye that was in it is now missing. Uh, and also, there are the ruined remains of this, this tower, which could be a dungeon entrance for someone in the future. Uh, let's let's uh, make this building into a ruin too. So there's um, some potentially monster haunted waterfall ruins. Okay, um, now the Age of Monsters. So in the Age of Monsters, some monsters move into these various regions. I'm gonna I'm gonna number I'm gonna redraw and number my my layers again just to make it clear. So one, two, and I'm gonna make this its own layer. So three, four, five. Six, seven, and the surface is eight. So the first thing that happens in the Age of Monsters is, um, hmm, pardon me, uh, three three monster groups um, spawn into this world. I pre-selected three because I wanted to make sure that today I used some monster groups I haven't tested yet. So these are three monster groups selected at random that I didn't do in yesterday's test. So first, we have dwarves. Which region of the world are the dwarves going to move into? Number seven. So uh, I think it makes sense for them to repurpose the gin prisons carved from solid rock as a dwarf home. And I think I'm going to say the dwarves came up from below, because I think in this world, dwarves actually originated from the core of the planet. Let's do dwarves in yellow today. So the dwarves start with two dwarves and two treasures. Uh, there was a treasure here left over from the gin, so uh, I'm going to let the dwarves collect that as their own as well. Farmers. Um, farmers always spawn on the surface. The card doesn't seem to say that. I mean, they have this surface tag, but uh, that's not necessarily clear that that means they start on the surface. So let's do farmers in green. They have no treasures population. I'm going to have them um, expanding into the wasteland. And finally, we have a cult spawning in area number four. Hmm, an alien life cult, perhaps. Perhaps some wayward dwarves or humans, farmers, or someone found their way into here. I'm going to draw the ruins of the old suspension bridge too, which has now fallen down. Let's, um, I'm just going to draw some squares here to represent uh, a cult compound. The alien cult. Hello, Namelicious. Welcome to How to Host a Dungeon. 
So now each of these monster groups uh, takes a turn. They have a life cycle which says what they do. So we'll start with the dwarves because they came in first. Uh, what the dwarves love to do is to exploit or gems or mineable resources. Uh, there are none of those where they are, but um, if no resources are available, relocate near to explorable, exploitable resources. Um, they haven't found any yet, so it seems this is perhaps just a temporary encampment of the dwarves as they explore to find this gold vein. So I'm going to dig some new tunnels. I think they are not wanting to deal with this alien stuff, so they just put a nice big door there as they explore along. Um, it will probably take them, you know, a couple turns to get over there. If, if they get there and survive, they may be able to build a pretty impressive um, civilization. A uh, monster, uh, not civilization. Um, dwarf hold, whatever you want to call it. Uh, next, the farmers. So the farmers can harvest surface biomes. What that means is if there's a surface biome available and there's a forest there, they can harvest it to generate treasure. Let's draw a, a barn to put that in because farmer treasure is food. Um, and because they're harvesting it, they don't have to destroy the forest to gain that. Um, if there are no surface biomes, then they can build wheat fields to farm. Uh, maybe these are gatherers instead of farmers. That's a thought. Uh, then they have several choices of the things that they can do, but I think they're just going to increase their numbers. That's one of their options. So more farmers. It's turning into a regular village. And finally, the cult. What the cult likes to do is to recruit. Um, but they don't seem to have any neighbors to recruit yet. So if there's no one to recruit, then they explore looking for people to recruit. So I think they're going to expand their knowledge of this alien forest and find this dwarf door, uh, which will initiate contact with the dwarves. I'm going to take some orange here and draw in some alien fungus. So on a future turn, they can try and recruit dwarves to their cause. Now, a new monster spawns into the world. So Nemulicious, this is a game called How to Host a Dungeon. Um, this is the new version of the game. There's an existing version you can get as a PDF or print copy for my website, uh, TonyDowler.com. Uh, this is the new kind of streamlined, adding some cool stuff. It's a game where you basically create a dungeon from the dawn of the world through the rise and fall of civilizations uh, to monsters. Eventually, when I complete them, there will be rules for adventuring parties and villains who try and conquer the world. Uh, and finally, you know, discover whether your world gets conquered by some evil villain or adventurers defeat them. All right, so a new monster, and our new monster is wolves. So wolves are nomadic creatures in this game. Um, they can be very uh, dangerous hunters. Oh, let's not use yellow for them because we've already got yellow. Um, you would think that maybe wolves are only spawn on the surface, but actually we, we do roll to see where they appear. And they appear here beside the magma river. Now, um, when wolves spawn near magma, they're hellhounds, so they gain the evil tag. Um, each monster has some tags. You can see the wolves' tags are wandering, animal, denizen, uh, and these wolves are also evil. That can have an effect on the game because certain creatures, um, like the knights, will hunt evil creatures, uh, whereas a vampire will ally with evil creatures. So let's, um, since wolves are nomadic, what I'm going to say is that they... They wander and forage along the banks of this underground river, uh, at the end of which there's, you know, maybe a hole into these abandoned wizard dwellings. Thank you for the follow. Um, I, I don't know how to tell what that chime was. I think someone just followed me, um, but I'm kind of still learning how to use Twitch, so... Uh, thank you for that. Maybe a Twitch expert can tell me. How, how do I tell if someone just followed me or, or what? 
what just happened. Uh, and wolves, they always relocate. They always move. So these wolves are just going to move down here. Um, there's no prey available for them to hunt. So they're just going to increase their numbers for now. Uh, and that's one turn of the Monster Age. Then we go back to the beginning. We randomize these cards as best we can. And then we start over again. So the dwarves are going to act first this turn. And they're going to continue to explore. Let's build a bridge over this river. And I think they're, I'm going to allow them to explore far enough to do some exploratory mining and discover that, yes, there is a rich vein of gold to be exploited. Then the wolves. So uh, the wolves always relocate. I could just have them like wander back and forth on this, but I do also want them to be able to find some prey to prey upon. So I think they're going to wander up these mostly ruined wizard rooms and eventually reach the surface, uh, surfacing underneath this poor, unfortunate farmer's farm. Let's draw a sinkhole there or something just to indicate that we've connected to the dungeon. Um, if prey is available and we outnumber them, we hunt them. Uh, they do not. The farmers have equal numbers to the wolves, which sort of keeps the wolves at bay. Um, so the wolves are just going to increase their numbers. Um, and, and you know, I say wolves, but since they spawned in your lava, these are actually hellhounds. So this is like a hellhound, um, a, a hellhound invasion, basically, uh, of the of the farmlands. Uh, the cult. So the cult always recruits when they can, and there are dwarves, so they're going to attempt to recruit dwarves. So we're going to roll some dice. Um, a black die for the cult, a green die for the dwarves. Uh, this is a straight dice off. There are things that can happen that give a monster group a bonus to this roll, but um, in this case nobody has a bonus. Uh, with a five, the cultists successfully recruit. And since this is a playtest, I'm going to go to that page in the rules and see what it says, because when you're playtesting, it's very important to follow the rules carefully, because that's when you find out if there are things in there that um, are not clear. Recruit. The active monsters transfer one treasure to the target group. So they're, you know, bribing them, impressing them, throwing a party. I don't know. If the target, then the dice off, um, the target group, uh, sorry, where is this? Uh, if the active group wins, the target group transfers one to them. So basically, some dwarves abandon their dwarf lives and join the cult. Uh, finally, the farmers. So the farmers harvest. Let's build a silo. Um, then they have a number of choices. Uh, they could fight these wolves. Uh, they could build something. I'm going to build. So they're going to expend their accumulated treasure and they're going to build a keep. Um, <laughs> on these old ruins, they probably should have checked the basement first, but What's an ancient keep built on an old foundation if it doesn't have a dungeon under it, right? Um, I'm going to call it Forest Keep because I'm terrible at coming up with names for things. Here, I'll put a farmer in there to show that it's, it's their territory. Uh, the keep counts as a fortification that gives the farmers a bonus if if someone attacks them. Mm. 
more we need more people into um, into mapping of all sorts. Mapping is awesome. I just want to put that vote out there. All right, let's see what new monsters we get. Um, okay, this is an interesting one. The Temple. Uh, in desperate times, dungeon creatures may turn to obscure or reviled gods for succor or power. Most of these cults pass into obscurity, but some prosper and grow to become great powers in their own right. When the temple spawns, add it to a random group that already exists. So, one, two, three, four. Um, which monster group has turned to religion and founded a temple? Uh, the dwarves, oddly enough. Uh, perhaps the influence of the cult has driven them to turn to a more fundamentalist interpretation of their own religion in order to uh, combat these youths who are running off and joining weird alien plant cults. Um, so what happens is we just leave this card out. The dwarves immediately gain um, one dwarf, one treasure, and a bonus token. So this gives them uh, a plus one to future conflict die rolls and also may enable them to build additional things or do special things depending um uh oh yeah devon sorry i missed your message um yeah uh, that's that's a great idea i should i should go on there i'm i'm a member of your discord i just don't use discord a ton uh and i've been so busy with my work lately that I haven't had a chance to get into it, but things are a little bit more normal now. So, um, yeah, hopefully I can get some some good hints. So, um, all right. The temple also gives the dwarves access to a couple of extra moves. They can extort groups that they share a tag with. So basically, um, hit up people of similar ilk for money, uh, and they can also build a bunch of cool buildings. So. Um, we will set that aside, and when the dwarves take their next turn, they will have that enhancement. All right, but first, oh, also these dwarves, we need to draw some more rooms for them to store their expanding wealth in. There we go. The cult is going to attempt to recruit some dwarves. Now, the dwarves get plus one on this roll now because they have a bonus token. So the green die is the dwarves. Uh, but the cult blasts them six to two. So more cultists, fewer dwarves. Um, but since the dwarves lost, they get to keep their token. Um, now, um, I think it's time for the cult to build something. I think they're going to build uh, a safe house. Maybe they sense coming conflict with the dwarven temple. But in any case, we're just going to add that. Let's label it too. safe house and that expends their their treasure next the dwarves so the dwarves can always exploit ore so they've discovered this gold vein and they're going to start mining it out so in case you can't tell that's a mine which gives them um, they also, uh, well, they can relocate to be near the ore, but I'm actually, they're building up a nice little base here, so I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to let them keep this as their, their home base. Um, now they can fight denizens. So dwarves are lawful humanoid denizens. The temple is order divine. The cult is, um, order Humanoid, so the cult is humanoid, so the dwarves could um, extort money from them, but they don't have any. I think they're just going to fight. I think the dwarves are going to attack, raid them in the night. Uh, and they succeed. The dwarves kill 
some cultists, uh, but since they win, they use up their, their token. Hey, Tapcat. Um, so Tapcat is acting, asking about yesterday's playtest in which we ended with a demonic horde consuming a giant cavern full of living crystal growths and growing out of control. So I, I did play that through a few more turns last night, which I, which I recorded, and I will post the video. Uh, ultimately, the horde just grew out of control until it was large enough to um, trigger the end of the Age of Monsters. Uh, I'm going to save that, and I'll bring it back when I have the alpha villain rules done, and we can see what happens when a horde tries to consume the world. But yeah, the knights did their best to wipe them out, but it just it did not go well. The, the horde uh, had really good dice rolls. Um, all right, and that's the end of the dwarf turn. So the farmers, um, they harvest, which gives them treasure. Um, should they fight the wolves? I think they will. This could go very badly for them. So the black die will be the farmers, the green die will be the, the wolves. Uh, one to two, it does not go well. Farmers die in the attempt. Uh, now the there are abandoned buildings dotting the, the wasteland. Um, and finally the wolves. So the wolves always wander. Now they're going to live in the forest for a while. And if they outnumber somebody, they may hunt them. So uh, hunt is a tough move. There's no dice roll. There's no defense. Uh, these fortifications don't help. The farmers just lose. Uh, I'm considering some rules where if you have fortifications, you can avoid being hunted. But I have to tinker with them because um, that being hunting is one of the things that controls populations from from running out of control. So, all right, and let's spawn kobolds. Kobolds enter the dungeon on level seven. So, um, this is an invasion. When a new monster group spawns on top of uh, an existing one. Uh, they fight. It's a straight dice off. Um, the black die will be the kobolds. The kobolds lose. So uh, basically, kobolds come up this tunnel from deep beneath the earth and encounter the dwarves. A fight ensues, but the dwarves drive the kobolds off, who have to go live somewhere else. So we'll draw a kobold escape tunnel and. They're basically going to find this ancient wizard corridor and try and turn it into a suitable home. Life life can be hard when you're a kobold. Okay, um, I'm going to take a five minute break and I'll be right back. So um, talk amongst yourselves and I'll see you in a few minutes.
All right, thank you for your patience. Just make sure my audio is working. Good. So uh, the Age of Monsters goes on. I'm just going to read what the rules say about the ed end of the Age of Monsters. And because I want to talk a, a little bit about how the ages work, because that is helpful for me from a playtesting perspective to have to explain things. So the current rules say the Age of Monsters end when one of two things happens. All the monsters die. Uh, if there are no monsters left, the game ends or you feel like ending the game. In the final version of the game, that's that's going to be a little different. So the game has a primordial age where the world was created, an age of civilization, like where our wizards uh, built their civilization and, and vanished, and an age of monsters where the monsters fight. Uh, the next age that I'm working on that is in the existing How to Host a Dungeon, but I don't have the version two of it yet, is the age of villains. So that's when either some monster group becomes so powerful that it, it starts to be a threat to the whole world, or some evil presence comes in and starts to dominate the dungeon and try and take over the world. And that's an age when adventurers come and fight the villain and you, you sort of see how that happens. What triggers that is um, if a monster group gets to eight population or eight treasure, um, or you get so many monster groups that the game is, is unmanageable. Um, so if a group gets to that point, then I'll end this playtest and call it done and I'll put it away and maybe bring this map out again when I have the Age of Villainy uh, written so I can try it out and find out what happens. Because, you know, barbarian hordes and mind controlling dungeon lords, vampires, armies of the undead, uh, these are all really cool things that I can't wait to simulate in this game. All right, time for some more monsters. The farmers. The farmers are in a tough spot. What can we do to save the farmers? Well, first, they farm and gather some treasure. Now, um, maybe they can build something. So for one treasure, they can build a silo. Well, let's build a super silo here. Um, when the farmers build a silo, they gain a bonus token. So uh, a fortification is no help against the wolves, but uh, this bonus token is. All right, now the temple dwarves. So first they will mine out some ore. Which gives them more treasure. Two, four, six, seven. They're almost ready to try and rebuild the dwarven civilization if they can survive. Um, and then I think they're going to continue to fight the cult, actually. So this is a straight up dice roll, no advantage. Um, the active group will be the black die. And they do. The dwarves kill more, more cultists. I'm going to just make some marks here to show battlefields, uh, discarded sword and shield. Now the wolves. Um, wolves, hellhounds, always wander, so I think they're going to wander over the mountains, uh, which is going to give the farmers a uh, reprieve. Uh, but they are going to continue to increase their population. So at six population, they are also in danger of becoming a large enough horde to threaten the world. The cult. Um, I think the cult needs to find their way to the surface so they can recruit from more than one source. But uh, 
they're going to try and convert the last enclave of dwarves. Uh, if they succeed at this, it will be a massive turnaround. Uh, but they fail. There's um, there's no downside to recruiting unless you have treasure. If you have treasure, you lose your treasure to the people you tried to recruit, but they don't have any treasure. So um, I'm going to make a note in my playtest rules to make sure that that is clear. Um, let's see, is there something else that they can do? They could actually, um, are the dwarves, the dwarves are an order, now that they are a temple. Uh, the cult can only fight lawful groups or groups that are, are an order or an organization. Um, so I think, actually, they're going to try and wipe the dwarves out the old-fashioned way. Uh, it is a tie. The attacker wins ties, so... In a daring nighttime raid, the cult slit the throats of the dwarves and transfer their massive hoard of treasure into the cult vault, uh, suddenly becoming horribly wealthy and considering plans for world domination. Um, the kobolds. So kobolds explore, being inquisitive creatures, uh, they head up these ancient stairways, and they discover this long-abandoned forge, which includes the Eye of the Kobold. At least that's what they're calling it now, that they've installed it in their treasure room on a wonderful pedestal where they can uh, worship and admire it. All right, let's draw another monster. We get... The Syndicate, uh, also known as the Mob. The Syndicate is going to arrive in level four. So, um, I guess having heard legends of their fabulous wealth, um, it's a heist, basically. It's an invasion. So, the Syndicate is going to dice off against the cult to see who gets to live here. Uh, the cult wins, however, so the syndicate has to move away and set up base somewhere else. Let's use blue for the syndicate. Um, I think they're actually gonna... Are they gonna take over the old dwarven realm? I think they're gonna do that. The syndicate they like they like to have neighbors so they can set up um, their gambling rackets and and milk their neighbors for money. So the dwarves are gone. The syndicate has arrived. The syndicate was inspired by um, John Stone Metzger has an amazing mega dungeon product called uh, the Dungeon Full of Dungeons, and it's just what it sounds like. It's it's a mega dungeon with several levels, each of which is a dungeon in its own right. Uh, one of the dungeons is a underground gambling casino run by weird um, alien wizards who have recruited from the surrounding monsters um, to either extort them or get them hooked on drugs. It, it's, it's a super cool mega dungeon and a super cool level, which is what made me start thinking about gambling casinos in dungeons. So uh, that's the syndicate. Now the syndicate gets to take their turn. Um, they always fight denizens who have attacked them, which is nobody. They, If they have a gambling racket set up, they gain money, but they don't. They don't have enough treasure to build a gambling racket. So I think they're going to extort the kobolds. Um, wonderful little dungeon you've got there, guys. Would be a shame if something were to happen to it. So the black die will be the syndicate. Um, and they succeed. They convince the kobolds to part with some of their treasure in order to fund their illegal activities. Oh, and then we need to spawn a new monster. Look at that, the farmers are hiding underneath the temple. Uh, let's take that away, actually, since the 
the dwarves got defeated. The knights. This could be interesting. So, uh, the knights are uh, a lawful order of questing knights who make it their business to fight other monsters, but especially um, big, powerful alpha monsters. So, uh, knights always spawn on the surface. When they spawn, build a chapter house construction for their order. Uh, let's put them on the mountaintop. What should this knightly chapter house look like? Um, just because I'm feeling sort of silly today, their chapter house is going to look like a giant knight's head. The Knigets. Um, let's make the knights yellow. The knights have no treasure, but lots of population. And they start with a bonus token. Um, so now they take their turn. They always explore. So I'm just going to plant a sword in the ground here to indicate that the knights have begun to explore that forest. Um, and then uh, fight the most powerful group encountered. Uh, that's going to be the wolves who are right there. I mean, there's a reason why these knights are building their home base on a wolf-infested mountaintop, right? They're obviously, that that's how they got their start, hunting wolves, uh, which means it's apparently an entire order of level one World of Warcraft characters. Uh, and they succeed. They slay a wolf, one wolf pelt. <laughs> you know, drawing that knightly chapter house as a uh, as a knight's head. One of the more controversial topics I've discovered is the topic of silliness in Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, for some people, silliness and playing a Dungeons and Dragons game are one and the same, and for other people, it's totally verboten. So. Um, uh, I always have a little bit of silliness in my games, and I hope nobody is turned off by that. Uh, you can certainly make your game of how to host a dungeon as gritty and and serious as you want. All right, the farmers. Well, the wolves aren't bothering them, so they keep on farming. If they can get to three treasure, they can build their last construction, which is a city, um, which then a new monster group appears in the city and, and lives there, which is kind of cool. I hope it, it gets to happen in this game. Um, and they're going to increase their numbers, re-inhabit some of those those empty farms on the grasslands. Yeah, yeah, buy-in is, is important. I mean, if you're, um, just to think of my own games, like... Uh, you know, a game where you're, you're say, investigating a serious issue. Like, I played a game in which the party were, were fighting slavers, right? There's a serious a serious topic there. And maybe, you, you know, you don't want silly names or whatever. And then other games, it's just silly from from the start. And that's, that's awesome, too. Okay, the Syndicate. Um, so, there's no one. No one has attacked them yet. They don't have a gambling racket set up. So I think their first thing is going to be to spend their money to set up a racket. And I think their racket is going to be um, is going to be dice. They're going to convert these old dwarven vaults into an underground dice parlor. Um, I think this is like the underground equivalent. That's their giant dice like a giant neon sign it's it's actually kind of funny that the dwarves found religion built a temple and now the syndicate are repurposing that temple as a as a gambling den uh, and that's all the syndicate does this turn kobolds kobolds always explore and i think uh 
they could go and seek out this this uh, buried ancient intelligence, but I think they're actually going to make their way to the surface. I'm going to draw some ladders here just to show that kobolds have been climbing higher and higher through the ruins so that they um, could, in theory, interact with the farmers. Um, and in fact, I think they're going to try and steal. That's one of the things they can do. So the kobolds are going to try and steal from the farmers uh, so that they have money to spend at the gambling dens, of course. Whoop. And they're successful. Cobalt raid garners valuable wheat. The dwarves have been wiped out. The cult. The cult are very close to ending the game. So first of all, they're going to recruit from the syndicate. Um, they succeed. Some of these folks think that uh, religion is a better business than gambling. <laughs> yes! A temple to the random number gods! If only! If only! Yeah, that's that's a good point, Tafcat, about um, tone being set. So yes, in yesterday's playtest, um, we we got basically um, it might have been Tafcat said it had a bit of an Adventure Time theme, and that just kind of ran away. Actually, I could show you the map. I've pinned it up in my um, maps to reuse board, but um, and I'll just gently put it down here. But you can see in our primordial age, uh, this is sort of taped together. So we had um, the ore deposits we decided were candy deposits. We had an ancient monster living in a kitchen sink. Um, you know, we had a, an order of questing knights whose symbol was a giant plunger. Uh, it was, uh, it got pretty, we had a, we had a, a vampire and weird alien fiends and stuff. It was, uh, and we named the mountain, the big rock candy mountain. It was, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> I might have to run an adventure time inspired game in that environment at some point. Um, okay. So the cult, they successfully recruited. So, um, if they can get one more treasure, they can launch their attempt to conquer the world. They could mine out this gold, but I'm going to say they haven't discovered it yet because the dwarves, they know the dwarves were mining something, but they don't know where. So I'm just to make the game go a little longer, I'm going to have them explore these ancient tunnels looking for access. They cross the underground river. but I don't think they can get there in one explore action. Get a little blue in here for our, our river. One challenge with tracing paper is it's not absorbent at all, so it's really easy for the ink to smear and um, blend and, and get goopy. That's my one um, complaint with my one complaint with tracing paper. Okay, the wolves. Oh, wolves always wander. So, um, now, I could have them wander down the underground river and, and mess with the cult. Um, but I think haunting the forest is a little bit more their speed. Um, they outnumber both these groups so they can hunt either group. I'm just going to roll randomly. One, two, three, they hunt knights. Four, five, six, they hunt farmers. Uh, four, five, six, they hunt farmers. Um, and then they have the option of breeding. Um, so they increase their numbers. I think the wolves need more options so that increasing their numbers isn't always their best option. So I'm just going to make a note. I'm not quite sure what other options I will give them, but I'm going to expand their, their card a little bit. And then finally, the knights. Uh, the knights always explore. So 
I am going to have them venture down the underground river looking for powerful monsters to fight. Let's plant a sword there. And I'm going to have them fight the wolves. And they succeed. And then we'll spawn a wizard. You're a wizard, Harry. Um, wizard. Spawning in level four. <laughs> A wizard has heard tales of the cult and their vast treasure um, and seeks to claim their alien fungus cave for his own. Uh, wizard versus cult. Uh, wizards spawn with a bonus token, so the wizard adds plus one to its roll, and it, uh, it succeeds. So the cult is actually driven out. Uh, driven out to where? I guess... They have to flee blindly down these decrepit wizard tunnels into the buried remnants of these wizard towers and just do their best in the, the petrified remains of the, the old witchwood. Uh, note, the cult still includes some dwarves and some some syndicate members who were recruited. Um, they do take all their treasure with them. I guess they're just going to have to dig a big cave to stuff it in. Man, those guys are, are rich. Um, what will we use for the wizard? Let's use purple for the wizard, because that was the color of the wizard civilization. Uh, I mean, maybe... This is one of the ancient wizards returned from a long sojourn in alien worlds to try and reestablish wizard. So now he takes his turn. Wizards always explore. Well, based on ancient records, he already knows that there's a gold vein out here, so he's going to explore in this direction. so that he can maybe make use of that in the future. Um, and he's going to spend... No, he's going to keep his bonus token. He can spend that to build a laboratory. But I think with powerful enemies nearby, he's, he's going to hold on to it because he may need it. Um, instead, he's going to exploit ore. So... Using his magical powers, he's going to mine out some ore and add some treasure. Yeah, that's a good a good point. Um, the wizard has the crown but lacks the alpha predator tag. Uh, probably I should just add the tag. I'm I'm trying to think of different ways to represent the difference between alpha predators and denizens. Um, one of the things I ran into is certain monster groups can interact with a monster group that shares a tag with them. For example, um, the temple can extort from any group that, that shares a tag. But currently, all monsters in the game are either alpha predators or denizens, which means almost everybody shares a tag. So, um, uh, advantage tokens from exploiting. Gee, uh, that's, that's right. So this is actually... Um, the wizard gets gets an advantage token. Um, most monsters do not accumulate many advantage tokens, but wizards they they actually build up advantage tokens, and that's what they use to build. Because um, you know they're wizards, they're they're magicy. Uh, yeah. So how the the alpha predators and denizens are represented is something. But for now, I'm just going to add the alpha predator tag because that's the intention is that the. Um, the wizard being alpha predator. Alpha predators are powerful monsters that are just really hard to kill, is what it comes down to. Uh, the cult 
So they no longer have access to the gold veins that could have put them over the top to try and conquer the world. Uh, the first thing they're going to do is try and recruit. They're going to try and recruit um, some farmers. So cult farmers. Uh, and they are successful. Farmers join the cult. And get sent to live in the basement of an ancient buried tower. Um, and now, I think they're going to fight the farmers. I think they feel their numbers are great enough that they can try and overwhelm the keep. So, uh, the farmers will be rolling at plus one for their fortification and plus one for their bonus token. So this isn't a great bet. But if the cult wins and takes that last treasure, then they will have the treasure they need to trigger the end of the Age of Monsters. Uh, but they fail. Farmers kill off a cultist. And then take their turn. So they harvest. And then I think they're just going to add population to avoid getting wiped out. You know, this is a thing in, in how to host a dungeon. So that choice I just made, I just tried to make the smart choice for the farmers to avoid getting wiped out. Uh, there's nothing in the game that says you have to make the smart choice. There's nothing in the game that says you can't try and have a particular group win. And there's nothing in the game that says you can't try and stop a group from winning. Like yesterday, the Demonic Horde, I, I did everything I could. All the monster groups around them made the right moves to try and prevent them from taking over the world. But the Demonic Horde won anyway. Yeah, and they lose their advantage token. Um, I'm really actually terrible at following rules, which is it's why it's funny that I made a game with so many rules. Uh, but how to host a dungeon is is very forgiving. If you make mistakes, the game kind of uh, keeps on keeps on going. Um, but for playtest, yeah, I definitely want to try and follow the rules correctly. Uh, the denizens, um, the denizens have a racket, so they generate wealth. Now, um, they're also a recruiting group. They're going to try and recruit some kobolds because their numbers are dangerously low as well. So syndicate recruiting, uh, they succeed. Some kobolds come to work in the casino. Sure, it's minimum wage, but the benefits. Um, the knights. The knights will um, continue to explore. I guess we'll plant a sword over here to show they have explored into the plains. Mm -hmm. All the knights love to fight alpha predators. I think they're going to attack the wizard because they love a worthy opponent. <laughs> I think the syndicates do have, have dental. In fact, sometimes they'll come and extract your teeth for free, whether you want them to or not. So here's a situation that's not covered in the rules. Uh, a group that has a bonus token gets a plus one. They both have bonus tokens. So I guess they both get a plus one. I mean, there's nothing in the rules that says the wizard should get plus two for having two uh, advantage tokens. Actually, advantage token, I think, is the proper the proper name. Um, that's. I'm just going to note in the rules to consider having those bonuses stack. I probably won't, but it's it's worth um, it's worth considering. Uh, and the knights are successful. They kill the wizard. There are not many groups in the game that can kill an alpha predator, um, but the, the the knights are one of them. They're consummate alpha predator killers. Um, if at any time the knights defeat what you consider to be a worthy opponent, 
uh, it, the rules used to say the most powerful monster on the map, but I just think any worthy opponent, they may immediately build a suitable monument. Um, so let's build a massive sword monument next to the chapter house. The wolves. Wolves always wander. And uh, being hellhounds, they have no uh, hesitation to wander underground. So they're going to inhabit those old uh, wizard tunnels that the kobolds mined out. Then they're going to hunt. Um, looks like they have three choices, so I'm going to go random. One, two, three, four, five, six. The wolves overrun the kobolds and wipe them out, leaving the kobold treasure there um, to be claimed because wolves uh, only carry one treasure with them. That's another rule that I've added in this current draft. Give the night helm a wizard hat. Oh man, where do you come up with these ideas? I have to, I have to. All right. Um, the wizard is wiped out. Kobolds, they are wiped out. Skeletons. Um, level three. Um, if there is a tomb near where the skeletons spawn, they spawn in the tomb. Didn't we? Yeah, we do have a tomb. The wizard civilization built a mausoleum and left this uh, wizard hat epic treasure in it. So sealed away for generations, the skeletons have begun to burst out, and I think they're just kind of digging their way, looking for something to appease their restless, uh, their restless cursed nature, um, and they burst into the tunnels where the wolves live. Let's use black tokens. No, no, we can't use black tokens. Um, red, let's use red. Red tokens to represent skeletons. And we need a little bit more space because they have treasure. A haunted treasure protected by skeletons. Um, skeletons can fight any monster group that is not undead, so they will fight the wolves. And they are successful in slaying a wolf. Uh, yeah, that could have I could have done that as an invasion too, but um, I didn't because the room they moved into had not yet been explored or discovered by anybody. So I I consider it a um, basically an, an empty section of the of the dungeon. But yeah, that's totally a judgment call whether that would be an invasion or not. Uh, skeletons move first, so um, I think. They're, they they have no nothing else to do they could explore but I think they're just going to continue to mindlessly fight against the wolves um, but this time they are unsuccessful a skeleton is destroyed the syndicate um, they have a functioning gambling establishment so they add money um, so uh, a move that I've added to the syndicate in playtesting is they can explore looking for new customers. So I think they've heard rumors of a strange cult inhabiting the upper dungeon, so they're going to connect up with them so that they can... Uh, bribe, extort, and recruit them. 
speaking of recruiting, it's the cult. Um, so for cults recruit denizens, which means they can recruit from any of these groups that they have contact with. So let's roll randomly. One, two, three, four, five, six. They recruit from the farmers. Uh, interesting note on the topic of recruiting hellhounds. The recruit move first came in when I was reading some old D&D modules and there was uh, an encounter with an ogre and the ogre had a number of, of dire wolves and animal companions with him. And I thought, oh, wouldn't it be cool if an ogre could recruit animals to, you know, help protect his lair, which led to me adding the recruit move to the game. All right. Uh, attempting to recruit a farmer. Uh, a failure. The farmers have had enough of these treacherous cult people. Um, now, man, the cult, they really want to get that last treasure. I don't think they can fight the skeletons. I think the wolves are basically in the way. But the wizard is gone, so could they exploit that ore? Um, well, it's 1147, and I need to finish this playtest at 12 o'clock uh, PST. So what I'm going to do is I... Um, They are not allowed to explore if they recruited. So uh, I'm going to say no. I, d I don't think that they can safely travel that far to mine um, when, you know, the wizard has been here and the knights are sort of patrolling that area. So no, I'm not, I'm not going to have them end the game by, by mining for ore yet. It just doesn't seem right. The wolves. The wolves wander. Um, they have a lot of choices now, so I'm, I'm going to say one, two, three, they go up, four, five, six, they go down. They go back up to the forests, or maybe up to the plains. Sure. They really are like a barbarian horde that comes and goes. Um, and then they're going to they're gonna hunt farmers, because they can. I think the farmers are currently so low in numbers, they're going to hide in their keep. Um, then the farmers, they can still harvest, and they're going to continue to add add numbers desperately. And then finally the knights continue to explore this river. So the knights are allowed to relocate to an area they've recently cleared of monsters. I think they're going to move underground and set up a camp in the alien fungus forest where they defeated the wizard and search for new monsters to fight. Speaking of which, a shadow hulk. This is the first alpha predator that I've seen in this game. Ah, uh, I take that back. The wizard is technically an alpha predator. And he comes in on the surface, uh, believe it or not. Um, let's go one, two, three, four, five, six to see where he comes in. Um, he is arriving from the wasteland and invading the wolves. Perhaps the wolves have finally encountered someone that is a little bit too um, too powerful for them. So uh, Shadow Hulk always hunts, so he eats some wolves, and then he can ally with a magical creature, of which there are none here. I think he's um, He's going to wander. He kills a wolf on his way through and wanders in towards the forests.
Oh, a Shadow Hulk spreads night. That's a that's a cool idea. The Shadow Hulk was originally my um, my interpretation of an, an Umber Hulk, because I think Umber Hulk is one of the copyrighted monster names. The knights. They always explore. Um, uh, one, two, three. They find the cult. Four, five, six. They find the syndicate. They explore in this direction. Draw in a sword and discover the cult. Um, fight the most powerful group they've encountered. That's the cult. So knights versus cult. Knights win. Um, I guess they're gonna kill. Um, they're gonna kill the cult farmers. Skeletons. Um, the skeleton area is not technically yet connected. There is a tunnel here, but nobody has actually explored or traversed that route. So I think the skeletons are going to fight the farmers. They're going to issue from that hole in the ground and attack farmer lands, but they fail, leaving their treasures unguarded. Um, which brings us to the cult. Um, they can recruit. Let's one, two, three, four, five, six. They attempt to recruit a knight. A failure. Um, and then they're going to try and fight a farmer because if they can get the farmer's numbers down, they could maybe claim those treasures. Um, but they fail at that. It's not a good day to be the cult. Um, I'm going to make a note that they should probably have access to the scout move. Um, the syndicate. Um, Tafcat, what is B-O-B? I'll bet I should know what it is, but it's not ringing a bell. The syndicate runs their gambling. They're going to try and... Um, I think they're going to try and extort the knights. They are successful. I would like to know how that conversation goes. How the mob approaches an order of bloodthirsty questing knights and convinces them to pay protection money. Oh, Band of Blades. Yeah, awesome. Uh, is that going to be a stream game by any chance? Because if it is, I'd love to check it out. Yeah, Band of Blades is... Um, that is a game that I'm um, very much want to want to try out. I, I haven't actually read it yet because I'm sort of saving it for when I have time to really give it some attention. Um, yeah, so that's at five o'clock tonight. I might I might be able to catch some of that. Um, so uh, we were talking about the syndicate extorting the knights. How I picture this is, so the knights haven't found the syndicate yet. So it's like one day a bunch of shadowy figures appear from the depths of the fungus forest and say, we know all the back ways and the secret ways and it's really easy for someone to get ambushed in this area. You know, you should pay us to be your scouts and guides so you don't get ambushed by, by someone. All right, I am following Kelsa's Twitch channel right now, if I haven't already, so that I can hopefully catch that game. It's 
Sorry, my browser's running super slow. Yay. So, the syndicate, the wolves, the wolves wander. I think things being what they are, they're going to return to their, their natural um, habitat and just be quiet for a turn. The farmers, they're getting wealthy. Um, so with five minutes left in the stream, this is probably not the best time for this, or maybe it's a great time for this. So uh, when the farmers have three treasure, they can build a city. And that's exactly what they're going to do. Because it seems that um, the best defense of being surrounded by monsters is, is more building. So we're actually going to build um, a walled city here where the forest used to be with this weird ancient wizard monument right outside the gates. Let's uh, put a couple towers above the city. They're so proud of their, their city having having no inkling of the, the wizard civilization that once flourished here with constructions 10 times as grand. Um, if a city is built, typo, Go through the monster deck and find the first surface or order monster group, then spawn it at the city's location. This does not cause an invasion. So basically, this is the way a way for the farmers to get a surface or order neighbor. There's a decent chance that a surface or order monster is going to be something that can, can ally with and coexist with the farmers in a good way, although it could be a monster group that's just kind of, you know, spawn um, destruction for them. Thank you for the follow. Uh, all right, so we're looking for a surface or order group. So I'm just going to keep going through until I get one of those. I'm not sure how many I even have in the game, but surely there must be some that have not yet turned up. I think I need more, more surface creatures. Or maybe I should I should allow humanoids to to spawn there too. Yeah, I don't have enough. I don't have enough surface monsters yet. So um, I'm going to make a note to make this less restrictive. And I'm going to spawn um, the first one I find that makes any sense to live in a city. So um, purple worms don't live in cities. Orcs. It's an orc city. That's not going to go well for the farmers at all because orcs love to fight. But hey. Let's make orcs. See, I'm, I'm glad that I built that city because it revealed a weakness in the game. So, uh, with more wealthy neighbors, the orcs always extort. With less numerous neighbors, the orcs always fight. So the orcs move into the city and attack the farmers who built the thing in the first place. And, oh no, the farmers get plus one because of their keep. So the orcs actually lose some of their numbers besieging the keep on the borderlands. Um, then the orcs get another action, and I think they're going to build defenses of their own. This fortification thing is a great idea. We're going to build one too. And then finally, the Shadow Hulk will hunt some farmers. No defense. 
uh, and then relocate underground. All right, um, it's 12 noon, so I think I have to call this game to an end. If I had to pick a winner, I would say probably the cult is going to win because, uh, you know, either the farmers are going to going to get recruited away. And the, in fact, let's let's just make a recruit roll. If the farmer, if the cults can recruit that last farmer and gain his treasure, they can win the game, and they do. So, the game ends with the cults recruiting the last farmer in the keep. Uh, gaining a foothold on the surface, and then if I had written the um, the Age of Villain rules, villainy rules yet, we would then have where the cult attempts to conquer the world from that surface base. So that's How to Host a Dungeon version 2. Thank you so much everybody for showing up. It is so much more awesome to play test this with people commenting and watching and just being interested. Um, it just uh, makes my game design and gameplay process so much more enriching and I hope it gives something back to you all. So uh, thank you Devin. Have a good day, play games, uh, make art, daydream, invent things, and have fun. Bye!